Hello, I'm Mike from Music Radio Creative. Now, this channel has existed for 15 years and many of you are probably thinking about starting a podcast, but you're blocked because you think, well, I'm going to have clunky gear or I'm not going to sound good or I need to go through reams of editing and hours of post workflow. And that's kind of what we covered on this channel for the last over a decade. But things have changed so much in just the last couple of years alone and there are new, easier workflows. Let's get started with the recording setup. And I'd recommend you start really simple. An inexpensive USB microphone is definitely the way to go here. And you can use things such as the Rode Pod mic, that's very popular. Bayer Dynamic Make the Fox, which is awesome and popular. And actually something I've been slinging in my backpack recently is this trusty Rode XCM50. It's awesome, it's got great sound quality, and it's super easy to plug in. In fact, all you need is a USB-C to USB-C cable. And it's as simple as plugging one end into that side, and the other end will go into your computer, whether that's a Mac Studio, as I'm using, a MacBook Pro, a PC. If it's got USB-C, it's going to work. Now, if you want to upgrade your setup and go a little bit further than just microphone into computer and recording, you definitely want to use an audio interface. I'd recommend something like the Rodecaster Pro 2 at present. In fact, on my desk right here, I've got a Rodecaster Duo and it's sufficient for me. The benefits are better audio processing because you can tweak and change the dials so you get a broadcast quality sound, and you can connect multiple microphones, whether they're by a traditional XLR cables or these trendy, wonderful USB-C cables. If it's a Rode mic, it'll actually work with the Rodecaster series. Okay, next up, it's recording. And the old way of recording was really difficult. You had to load multiple tools and make cuts and edits at the end. And that was just on your disk. Now you can do it all in the cloud using Riverside because it's video first, easy to use, and and it has some powerful AI. In fact, I'll show you my account and you can get a free account for 30 days if you use my coupon code Mike. The link will be down below. So let's log into my account here. And once you're inside your Riverside account, just tap the record button. When you hit record, you're taken into your studio. And of course, you type in your name and select I'm using headphones. You'll see my camera is selected here. Just make sure you select the correct device that you're recording from and the correct device that you want to hear audio back on. It's as simple as that. Then you can click to join the studio. This is really easy. Now, here I am in my Riverside studio. And look at this. It gives me a link that I can copy and email to a guest. They don't need to be signed up to Riverside or have anything installed. They can open that link in their browser and join me as a guest in the show. It really is as simple as that. And one of the big things about Riverside is you can store all your large audio and video files in the cloud. So there's no more storing these large hefty files on disks or multiple disks because it's all done for you right here in this tool. So my recording is at 1080p, which is great. We can see audio is coming through my microphone. The video is on. We've got echo cancellation. Now I'd recommend if your recording setup is good and you're not hearing too much echo, disable this. There's no need for that. You can also pop open the details for all your participants to check the quality. In my case, it's full 1080p. You can go up to 4K with this as well, and it's recording on the web. We can also look at the recording info here and note that a maximum quality of 4K is available to us should our camera support it. So this is the great thing. Cloud, bulky files, all go over here. And then when we're ready to record, whether we have a guest or not, we just hit start recording and we get a nice little countdown here and my podcast can begin. And here I am with the Mike Russell Riverside podcast. You'll see I can also start a live stream using this up here. If I want to actually go live with my podcast, that is a possibility. And you'll see at the same time as I'm recording, I'm also uploading my audio and video files constantly so that they're stored in the cloud. This is really great stuff. I've also got options available to me as I record, like placing a marker here in my recording. That'll appear later on when I go to edit. I can change my camera and microphone. I can also react at certain points and uh, put something on the screen to show that I found that rather interesting. You've got raising of hands and other features that we'll cover a little bit later on. But when you've finished your podcast, you can just 
end the session. Now, I would suggest, first of all, stop your recording. And this is really important. Make sure you and your guests stay until the upload has completed here, which we can see it already has. It's so incredibly lightning quick. Look at this. The upload is nearly complete. And when the upload is complete, both I and my guest can leave the studio. This is then ready to edit. There we go. You'll see that my recording is available from two minutes ago, ready to play or edit should I wish. I'm going to show more and I'm actually going to go in and find an episode that was recorded previously so that I can go ahead and show you how edits work. Now you'll see I'm right inside the episode and I can do text-based editing. Welcome indeed. Okay, so we had welcome indeed there. If I want to cut that out, I just hit the delete key. Notice how it's now crossed out from my transcript and we can play this. Welcome again. So, Ingvar. And you'll also notice there was a little mumble there. Well, I can also delete that. Welcome again. So, Ingvar. And straight away, it goes straight into the speech. You can see how powerful this is. Now, if you're used to editing here in the waveform view, don't worry, you can do that too. You can actually zoom in and you can see the edits that have been made. Let's play this. Welcome again. So, and we can actually just change those edits to be exactly where we want to make sure that they're nice and clean and just how we like them. So let's play. Welcome again. So, Ingvar. Ah, smooth, perfect. So not only can we do text-based editing, but we can refine down here in the waveform view. You'll see all the edits and the different speakers in different colors. This really is modern next-level editing. Now, if I want to go to the start of my podcast and just trim in, I just grab this and I trim to the start of the waveform. It really is as simple as that. So easy to edit. Plus, if you're a little bit old school, possibly like I used to be, you can actually click expand tracks over here, and this will actually open up and show you both speakers on two separate tracks. So you're essentially doing multi-track editing right inside the Riverside editor. I cannot understate how awesome this is to have full control over your podcast, both audio and video, right here inside the Riverside editor. But it doesn't stop there. AI tools are a big part of why I use Riverside now for podcast recordings. If I click this, I've got a bunch of stuff and I can actually remove all the pauses from my podcast. Now, notice there are 726 pauses in this episode. That might be just a little bit too aggressive. We can actually pop this open and we can slide over and see, actually, this is far less aggressive. This is 66 pauses, or we can go 163, or we can go the full throttle 726. It really depends what your tolerance is. If you turn it all the way down, it's just seven pauses cut. I think a happy medium is maybe sliding it down by one, so we don't go overzealous here. Let's tick, and within moments, it's done, and all the pauses have now been cut, look at this, out of my podcast episode. This is really cool stuff. But it's not just about pauses. Sometimes you need pauses, so use this with caution. But you can also remove filler words here. Yes, those pesky ums and ahs. I recommend leaving the method on smart because it works incredibly well and hit apply. All your ums and ahs, your underconfident speakers, will be resolved and sound like they really know what they're talking about. And this is a really fun one. Find fluff. Now look at this. If we recommend parts to cut and hit apply here, it will search for fluff. And look, it's it's my AI producer here looking over my shoulder and said, remove this part of your speaker here because you need to refine the speaker's verbal delivery. Essentially, make them sound a lot better. I'll say, yes, please. And then it'll go through and it'll find more things. Cut this. There are verbal stumbles here. Perfect. Let's do it. It's essentially an AI producer looking over my shoulder and removing all the rubbish from the episode. So let me just recap here. We've removed silences. We've removed the ums and ahs. And we've even made the speaker sound more coherent by removing any fluff using our wonderful, gorgeous AI producer here. This is incredible. So we've done a lot with our magic audio tools over here. And uh, well, actually, there is a tool called Magic Audio. In case your speaker is not sounding so good, let's listen to this speaker over here. What is this uh, uh, miracle? OK, so he's talking, but he's not actually talking on a microphone. He's using an internal microphone. If I click Apply Magic Audio with the best settings, you can see that we can actually change it. So if Isabella has a microphone, which she does, we'll change that down to original audio. We don't need to enhance Isabella. And then for the guest speaker, we'll just put it somewhere over here and take a listen when it's processed. Just bear with me on this. It's going to process for a while. 
Okay, and we can see that's been done. We can actually go ahead and zoom in on this speaker and play them back with a bit of magic audio. Uh, uh, miracle fields of unlimited possibilities. So now that sounds a lot better. Let's take that AI tool and let's just check on the magic audio here. We can turn it down and make it the original audio and listen back. Uh, uh, miracle fields of... So that is super bad because that's room echo and all the noise. We can crank it right up to 100 and see what that does. Uh, miracle fields of unlimited possibilities. So and that sounds like it's a studio microphone, right? You may find that your happy place is somewhere in the middle with magic audio, but just know it's there and it can do incredible stuff. Now, it doesn't stop at the audio podcasting because we know that we need video podcasting in this day and age. I mean, my goodness me, this is the time that you can put your podcast on YouTube and a lot of people are watching the video on places like Spotify too. So let's go back into AI tools and first of all, take a look at this smart layouts. Now, you'll definitely want to apply this if you have two speakers. Essentially, it will decide who to show on screen at what time and make the camera cuts for you. Look at this. When we've got our main speaker speaking, she is showing on camera. When we have both speakers interacting, they're both showing on cameras. And as we zoom out, we can see tons and tons and tons of smart edits are being made all the way through here. And the best thing is, if we head here and we decide that we want to change that scene, it's very easy to do so. All you have to do is select the scene in question, select the layout, and of course you can choose the solo speaker, the split speaker. Let's go for solo speaker, and now we just have one speaker on screen for this particular camera cut. You also have the ability to add your own branding, so you can choose your own theme. This is actually pretty cool, so we can have a theme like this with certain types of captions. It's really, really nice. You've also got the ability to add a logo, choose the color palette that you're going for, for your own brand, design, customize the captions. This is super cool. We can choose our style and sizing of captions, and we can even add an intro and outro as well to every single podcast episode, so you can easily have the same intro and outro every single episode. Now, once you're done, finally, we'll want to finish this story by exporting your final video and getting things like the transcript. Okay, so we're happy with everything. Let's click export and you can see I can export a video in whatever quality I so desire and click export video. You can also grab the audio only if you want to upload to an audio only platform and even grab the timeline for professional tools such as Premiere, Final Cut Pro and Pro Tools, those can be exported and imported into your favorite NLE editor. Okay, now you're going to see that my episode is exporting and I'll be notified once it's ready to download, but it doesn't stop there. I can actually go into the share button and I can share this episode to multiple different podcasting platforms, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's a dedicated podcast host or somewhere like Spotify or even social media. It's all shareable right here from my Riverside control panel. Finally, when we're ready to publish, you'll also want show notes. And look at this. Riverside also generates for you some fantastic show notes. We'll just wait here while that happens. Here they are with keywords, a beautifully written summary, some takeaways, sound bites, and most importantly, those chapters specifically for YouTube and Spotify and hopping around into your podcast. You can easily copy them to a clipboard and paste them in wherever you so desire. You'll also notice there's this made for you area, and this is really cool. Not only do you get a magic episode, what Riverside determines is the best edit for your show, cutting out any need for you to be a post producer on your podcast, but you'll get these wonderful magic clips that are titled and ready to share straight away to your favorite platform, whether that's TikTok, X, or any other social network. You can even go in and edit those magic clips and absolutely cut them as you've seen in the previous editor. It's easy to get them cut down to exactly how you want them to be and post them online. So there you go. That's the simple and powerful workflow for podcasting in 2026 and beyond, whether it's audio, but I recommend audio and video. Share your thoughts in the comments down below and remember to subscribe and like. I'll have more videos and tips just like this coming soon. Thanks.